Now we're going to learn the basic backhand. And there's two basic backhands that I've found works best. The first is if someone has played tennis prior to their injury, then they know there should be a little grip change. So we're going to start with the grip change. Alan has his forehand grip, his continental, I mean his semi-western. He's going to switch so his first knuckle is on top of the racket. His other knuckles are diagonal. And when the ball comes, he's just going to give it a little bump. So let's go through that again. He has a semi-western grip. He moves over. He moves his hand so the first knuckle is on top. And the way we do that is from the push rim. Alan will demonstrate. He has a little push, changes grips, gives it a bump. He'll come back again, does a little push forward, changes his grip with his right hand only, gives it a little bump. Now, you're going to see in a little while that when someone has been injured and then they want to learn to play tennis, in other words, they never played tennis prior to their injury, we're going to show you how we don't change grips at all. We do what's called the reverse backhand. But right now, we're going to do the basic backhand. This is someone that played, knew how to change grips prior to their injury. We have four basic moves on the backhand. Alan will demonstrate before I even toss the ball. He pushes forward, changes his grip, does a little bump, makes an outside turn, and goes back. Comes forward again, changes his grip, pushes, makes an outside turn, and goes back. This time he pushes to the side, changes his grip, makes an outside turn, and comes back. And one more of those, please. Goes to the side, changes his grip, little bump, and goes back. Third position. He turns, he goes back, looking for a high ball, changes the grip, little bump. One more, please. Goes back, bump, and outside turn. Fourth position, gets out of the way, grip change, little bump and comes back. The four basic moves, we're starting with move number one, how does he move forward, hit the ball, and then recover. Alan pushes forward, changes his grip, a little bump, does what's called an outside turn, and goes back. He moves in, changes his grip, gives the ball a little bump, and goes back. And one more, please. And notice he's doing this with his arm. And goes back. Second position. Alan now is going to move to the side. This is probably the most common position there is. The ball's hit to his side, gives it a little bump, makes an outside turn, and comes back. Ball's hit to his side, changes his grip, a bump and makes an outside turn. A third position. The ball's hit and Allen has to back up. Let's see what he does. Gives it a bump and gets out of the way. He goes back. And out of the way. And if need be, if need be, Allen is able to hit the ball on two bounces. We do have the two bounce rule. Starts back. Now for fourth position. The ball sit right at Allen. He has to get out of the way. Let's see how he does it. So he pushes back to the side and changes his grip. And that's a lot to do. So you have to be patient. We use the same progression. Alan now will back up to three quarter court, which is halfway from the service line to the baseline. He's now going to 
grip down on the racket. His first knuckle is on top. We call this a continental grip. And he's going to go through the same four moves. So he moves forward, gives the ball a little bump, and he adds a little follow through. And his racket, as it goes up, finishes like this, and it's like he's looking under a bridge, as opposed to letting his wrist flip. He hits, a little follow through, like he's looking under a bridge. He moves up. He looks under the bridge. He moves up. Grip change. Looks under the bridge. Now one thing on the back end that will help is as he changes his grip, his racket goes towards his tricep. Then he looks under the bridge. So the tricep is just a point of reference so he knows the racket is back far enough and the wrist is in a strong position. This would be a weak position. Touching the tricep with the edge puts him in a strong position so he could avoid injury. And finishes looking under the bridge. Second position. Allen's going to move to the side, goes to his tricep, and looks under the bridge, makes his outside turn. And we'll do it again. The ball's to his side, touches and hits. Notice that he was hit the ball on two bounces, which he's allowed to do. Third position, Allen backs up, the racket goes towards his tricep, he finishes looking under the bridge. Allen goes back, he's allowed two bounces, very good, and we'll do one more. And outside turn and recovers. And the last will be fourth position. The ball sits at Allen, pushes back and gets out of the way, changes his grip, looks under the bridge. Ball sits right at him, gets out of the way, Looks under the bridge. First move, forward. Outside turn. Second move to the side. Grab the left wheel, outside turn. Third move, back. Outside turn, last move, the ball that's right at me. So on the backhand side, the ball that's coming right at me, my first move is with the left wheel, then maybe the right, depending on where the ball exactly is. So some tips for the basic slice is, remember you want to start on your tricep here, and you want to finish in a strong position. You don't want to let the wrist go. So let's see how that looks with a ball feed. Strong position. You don't want to let the wrist go. And also with the backhand, you, you don't want to start with the arm straight with the top spin. You want to start with the elbow bent in a nice loose elbow position. You don't want to start with it straight because that can just cause injury. Because at one point I did try to hit backhands with a straight arm and I was hurting my arm and it wasn't until I understood that I had to start with a bent elbow, that that was the correct technique.
Alan now is going to demonstrate the reverse backhand where he uses his forehand grip, which we call a semi-western, rotates the arm, and then hits up on the ball. This works very well for someone that's had an injury, they're in the chair, and now they want to learn to play tennis. So there is no grip change. In fact, for some people that play tennis prior to their injury, this might work out well for them also. So Alan has a semi-western grip. He pushes forward. He rotates his arm, and he hits up. The chair movement is exactly the same. The only difference is no grip change. He rotates his arm, and he goes back. First position, second position to the side. Second position. Very good. Third position, he starts back. Hits and comes back. Fourth position, ball's right at him. He gets out of the way and hits. And one more, please. Now, just as a side note, for many years, I tried to teach everyone the grip change, even if they hadn't played tennis, or even if they had played tennis prior to their injury. And I found in the past year or so that by teaching the reverse backhand works very, very well, and everyone should give it a try. Now, let's do the backhand. 